recently purchased a 2021 Giant Rain mountain bike and posted a video on YouTube evaluating this bike and describing how it rode. I've since received a number of comments and questions, so I decided to respond to these questions and advise whether an all-mountain bike or an enduro bike is right for you. But the key thing to impress here is that neither bike geometry is better. It's more a matter of trading off one attribute versus another. And the trade-offs mostly relate to the bike's geometry and how and where you're going to ride your bike. So let's look into these trade-offs. An all-mountain bike is designed to be suitable for nearly all biking conditions. Conditions that are generally undulating and that the bike climbs and descends equally well. And the bike needs to be relatively light since uphill performance may be highly desired. Alternatively, an enduro bike is designed to excel more in the downhill direction that it's more stable under steep descents, that it flows better at high speed and handles better under rocky, rooty, and gnarly terrain conditions. Since these conditions generally require bigger wheels and brakes and a sturdier frame, greater shock capacity and travel, these requirements typically cause the bike to weigh more and the frame geometry to be set up differently. Riders seeking these attributes are willing to compromise the bike's uphill climbing ability somewhat in return for a greater emphasis on the downhill ride characteristics. However, I should also add that an enduro is still more of an all-mountain bike than a full-on downhill design bike. The enduro category slots in between an all-mountain bike and a full-on downhill bike. Downhill bikes generally come with even more weight and are mostly suitable for riding in lift-assisted downhill bike parks. But let's get back to the bike frame geometry again and discuss these trade-offs. Here's a diagram which shows all the frame measurements which your bike manufacturer will post on their website where you can investigate and compare. For the purposes of this discussion, I'll compare an all-mountain bike and an enduro bike which I've personally ridden and which are both manufactured by Giant Bicycles. These bikes are the 2021 Trance and 2021 Rain. The Trance being the all-mountain bike and the Rain being the enduro bike. And here I provide a table showing the frame measurements of each bike and show a column to the right that shows the difference between the two frame geometries. So let's discuss the six key geometric measurements that distinguish an all-mountain bike from an enduro bike. Head tube and seat tube angles, shock travel, wheel base, standover height, and bottom bracket drop. A slacker's head tube angle will position the front wheel further out in front of the bike, enabling a much steeper descent before the rider will feel that they may go over the front handlebars. A steeper seat tube angle will position the rider further forward and more over top of the crank, enabling a more efficient riding position for climbing. Ideally, the seat would actually be further back for a bike designed for exclusive descending, but this significantly compromises the bike's climbing ability. Greater shock travel will enable the rider to land bigger drops and jumps before the shock will bottom out, so this is good for riding big features. But greater shock travel usually also requires a bigger, larger frame and goes with a bigger shock capacity, adding size and weight to the bike. I find that riding jumps and drops of up to 3 feet can usually be accomplished by less than 140 millimeters of shock travel, and for drops of more than 3 feet, riders should seek something in the 160 millimeter range or greater. Additionally, an all-mountain bike can typically be beefed up by simply adding greater air pressure to the shocks, but this will create a much stiffer shock and may not be all that comfortable for overall riding conditions. If you're planning to ride steeper and more challenging terrain, nothing will compensate better than greater fork travel. Longer wheelbase will also set the bike up for greater downhill stability. Similar to the slacker head tube angle, a longer wheelbase will position the wheel further ahead of the rider, enabling the rider to roll steeper terrain before causing an endo over the front handlebars. However, a longer wheelbase will also cause a greater turning radius, so those steep, sharp switchbacks will be a little more challenging and require you to improve your skill. A longer bike will feel much more smooth and stable for riding those large, fast berms and downhill park type of trails. The standover height is mostly a consideration so that the rider can properly and comfortably straddle the bike. Lastly, the bottom bracket drop is a factor if the bike is designed so long and low for a downhill that the bottom bracket hits log and large rocks you attempt to roll over. The front ring can be damaged if the bottom bracket's too low or if it's not protected by a ring protector. So lots of factors to consider. But let's go back to the bike frame geometry a moment to look at an illustration I've prepared to show how the wheelbase and slack head tube angle combine to improve the bike's ability to roll over steep terrain. Here I show the center of gravity for the rider by a red dot at roughly the rider's mid-torso. Now from this center of gravity I draw a triangle connecting a line to the hub of the front wheel and a line on the riding surface. Now you can see how a rider can roll down increasingly steep terrain until the point where the cyclist center of gravity is in front of the front wheel hub, at which point the rider will do an endo over the front handlebars. 
In this illustration, this occurs at a terrain angle of 47 degrees. Now let's imagine a second mountain bike with a longer wheelbase and a slacker head tube angle. These two changes will combine to move the hub of the front wheel forward by maybe 4 to 6 inches. And so for these changes, let's also draw the same triangle. In this illustration, you can see that the cyclist can now roll down a slope of about 51 degrees before they do an endo. The slope which is steeper by about 4 degrees. So if you like to challenge yourself and ride steep features, then these 4 degrees may be critical. I should also add that clearly, dropping your seat post by the full drop and moving your body position further back will also increase the steepness of the rollable terrain. But given that you can make these body position adjustments for both types of bikes, then the slacker geometry will further improve your steep descent capability. Well that pretty much covers all the factors you may need to consider. In conclusion, if you aren't planning to ride any steep technical features or don't plan to learn how to jump or ride over large drops, then an all-mountain bike is probably best for you. But if you want a bike design that might enable you to improve your skills, broaden the train you can ride, and grow with you as you become a better rider, and you're willing to tolerate a bike that might be two or three pounds heavier, then I'd say an enduro caliber bike is for you. For me, I started out on the all-mountain giant trance, and as my riding skills progressed, I found this riding much more challenging than an enduro caliber train than I ever imagined. An enduro bike will be a bike that will grow with you as your skills progress. Well that's all for now folks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.